Howdy. Well, it's happened again. I got on the internet, tried to find some information on a particular thing, got frustrated, so now I'm making a video to tell you what I couldn't find. What I wanted to figure out was how to properly configure my Behringer X32 to be a Mackie controller with as many functions as I could possibly pack into it to make it useful. And I'm going to show you how I set mine up. So here, of course, is my Behringer mixer. If you've watched my previous video, you know what I did so far was I set this section up over here for inputs only. And then my auxiliary sends, or rather returns, are going to be for what's coming out of Cubase. And if you're not sure how to set that up, it's very, very simple. Please refer to the previous video I made. But over here, this is the, these eight channels are the Mackie control surface emulation. And Mackie control only allows for eight channels, so as cool as it would be to use all the 32 channels to mix in Cubase or some other program, it's really not possible because of the Mackie format. All right, so, so let's take a look at how I've got Cubase going here. Um, first of all, go to Devices and Device Setup, and you're going to need to add the Mackie controller. The way that's done is, in fact, I don't want to delete this one because I've got the setup, but you go hit the plus sign right here, and then, uh, and then when you hit it, it gives you a number of selections, including Mackie controller. Pick Mackie controller. When you do that, you're going to need to assign its MIDI inputs and outputs to the XUF MIDI. Now, I probably didn't make this clear, but I'm doing this on a PC. Um, but you could do the same thing on a Mac. It's the, the, the interface looks exactly the same. The things that you set up are exactly the same. Now, I'm going to quickly go through what I set up on the function buttons. And then after you've done my setup, why you can customize it, to be the way you want it to be, but um, I'm recommending that you at least start here because these are a lot of basic controls that everybody uses over and over again. So, category one, um, your F1 button, I have devices, mixer. If you pick devices, you'll find mixer. It's like this. You pick it, you find devices, and then you can only select certain things. In this case, you can select mixer. See how that works? Okay, so going down the list, F2, I have transport panel. F3, I have transport, use metronome. F4, I have devices, VST performance, which for me seems to be a constant thing I'm checking. Um, for F5, I have edit, edit channel settings. That's going to bring up this guy. Yeah, let me get out of this. That's going to bring up this guy and whatever channel you have selected. Uh, in F6, I have devices setup, which I use a lot because I change... My, uh, my interface a lot because when I'm recording keyboards or I'm recording guitar out of my GR55 I have that stuff going USB straight to the computer and that way I can rec record my audio from those devices straight into the computer digitally without having to go through the mixer. F7 is devices control room mixer and F8 is control room talkback and I'll explain why I use these at the end. Uh, let's take a look at what, I, what I've set up here. Go to uh, actually, what you want to do is pick this guy down here, the View button, and I'll run down real quickly all the things that you want to set. I'm actually using all three of these, one, two, three of these, as Mackie control items. The encoders, um, by the by default, we'll go up here and look at them real quick. You only give you certain choices. The choices are uh, parameter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and jog. And what parameter 1 through 8, I'm sorry, 1 through 8, not 7, 8, what those do is they allow you to use these encoders as your channel pans for either channel 1 through 4 or 5 through 8. I'm setting up each encoder to be 1 through 4, and on page 2, I'm setting them up to be 5 through 8. Uh, and the point of that, and the way you do that is up here where it's, you see set A, set B, that's your page one and two. And that way, whenever I have a set of eight selected here, I'm going to get the pans one through four and five through eight here for these channels. And when you make these changes here, you'll see them appear here as well as in Cubase. So what I've done is on set A, I'm going to button five. I have button five, and I'm just going to tell you the rundown real quick. I have button five is return to zero, RTZ. Button six is record. Button seven, I have is bank left, 
by Nate Bankwright, 9 stop, 10 play, 11 rewind, 12 fast forward. Now when I go to page B, it's very, very similar. We Again, I have all my encoders set up to be 5 through 8. And then button 5 is cycle. Button 6 is record again. Button 7 is bank left and right again. The buttons 9 through uh, 12 are exactly the same as they were previously. A stop and play, rewind and fast forward. And then in section C, I have only the encoder number one on, and that's set to jog, and I've turned, I've disabled all the others. And then the buttons five through uh, 12, I have a set parameters F1 through F8. Now those F1 through F8 parameters were the same ones that I set in this screen, going back over to the computer, Mackie control, it's gonna be the same as those. Everything that I want, now you can do this and get play as well I'm, if you want to. You can set this to be a replay and stop, but I've assigned them over here so I can just have nothing but channel mutes. And then over here I have my, my uh, go back to this, I have play here. I have stop here, return to zero, play again. And then for each channel, and uh, I'm, I can go bank, 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 bank. And every time I do that, okay, let's see, here's my first bank. Um, I get all of my pans for the first four and then hit B button, pans for the second four. You know, right, right at, uh, where I need them. So I've got all eight channels here and all eight pans right here. I still have all my transport controls for the most part. The only thing that's different between my first section and my second section is I have a cycle button which I can turn off and on where return to zero would be. So lastly what you want to know is what I have here. Okay so let's go through them real quickly. When I hit that I get a full screen mixer. Uh, my button six is my transport bar. My button seven, you'll pro if you look down the bottom of the screen, you'll see the metronomes. Uh, oops, get there. Now the metronome is coming on and off. And I didn't see it before, sorry about that. Okay, my next button is my VST performance button. And then we get to F5, which is that guy. Brings that up and down for the selected channel. And by the way, you can select a channel here. And as I do that, you'll see my channel EQ, you know, my channels change. Okay, so turn that off. Next, we have my device setup. And as I mentioned to you, I go here quite often uh, to change which audio interface I'm using. And then lastly, the last two, I have control room and talk back on and off set because I use VST Connect quite often. If you don't use VST Connect at all or you don't use the control room with a talk back, these are completely useless. If you want to set the control room to different outputs on this because you want to have a separate mix going to, to your folks that are recording, that's all easy enough to do and I can explain that to anyone who bothers to leave a message wondering how to do it. Um, hopefully this has been informative. I'm trying to keep this short and simple. So if you have questions that I, on things that I haven't covered, please feel free to leave comments.